Good afternoon, everybody. How are you today? I hope your day's been fantastic. Hey, look, I'm excited today to show you uh, some skill building around making your own pasta and turning it into ravioli. I'd love a bit of a show of hands as you're coming on and watching replays and stuff. I'd love to know, have you made your own ravioli before? Or is it something you've never tried because it seems all too hard, right? Well, today's the first time I'm gonna make it, so I'm gonna make it with you guys and take you along for the ride. Now, today I'm actually using our foreign recipe. I'm actually using using an Italian recipe and you'll notice there's actually an Italian on the screen as well. Reason being is it's actually got the filling I want. Now because we're in lockdown in Brisbane at the moment, uh, limited supplies on what's in my fridge or what was in my fridge before lockdown so I kind of had to work with what I've got. And so what do I got? I've got cheese and I've got some meat and that seems to be what the filling is in this. So let me today show you how to make it all and even things like how to translate it. The screen won't translate it, however I have my laptop here and the laptop has up the top if you operate your laptop in Chrome, it has a translate button up the top and it does it for you. So let's get cooking. <coughs> oh, I just ate some of that buckwheat bread. It's amazing, <coughs> but it's gone down the wrong hole. All right, let's keep going. First things first, it's got this flour. Okay, this is baker's flour uh, or what they know as double O flour in other countries. We need to buy it in Australia in a massive five kilo bag. You can buy it in a 500 gram bag. However, that's just going to give you one serve and it's about half the price of a big bag. So you might as well buy the big bag, throw it for the fruit through the fridge for 24 hours. It gets rid of the weevils that like to live in the seals up here. You won't see them. It's their little tiny eggs. So you can't see them until they hatch out and make a mess in your pantry. Um, but yes, so the first thing is 400 grams of this. By the way, you can half this, you can quarter it and it will still work out perfectly fine. Let me just wiggle my thermomix out for a second if I can so that I can, there we go, reach for 400 grams. So this has got, for every 100 grams of flour, we put an egg into it. So let's grab this bag out. And I'd love to know, have you had a go at this at ravioli before making it yourself? I kind of took a gamble and thought most people probably haven't, which is why, oh, nearly there, why I thought we'd do it today. Let's learn a skill together. All right, here we go. 400 grams. Now, by the way, not gluten-free friendly, okay? Those of you who are gluten-free that are watching along, you want to be doing this morning's buckwheat bread or tomorrow morning's bread or the morning after. Mornings are gluten-free, afternoons are not. So... All right, 397 grams, close enough. Now this that you may not be able to understand here is eggs. Now, by the way, the other thing you can do if you are wanting to translate foreign recipes is you can actually find, there's an app on your phone you can download, put it up to the screen, it will actually read it and it will then tell you what that is. So you could actually hold your phone up. I know though that this is eggs. So we want four eggs into the Thermomix. So as I mentioned though, you can quarter this down. It could be 100 grams of flour and one egg. That's easy, right? You can do that. Okay, next thing is oil. You can kind of see that that says oil there. 10 grams of oil. Again, easy enough to uh, work down if you don't want to put, if you don't want to do this massive batch, if you want to make a small batch. Okay, next, on with the lid. Where's my lid? Uh-oh, measuring cup? That's all right. You know what I've got here is an old TM31 measuring cup because I'm going to use it later to cut them out. So I'm just going to use that for the moment because the measuring cups are all outside. Okay, it's got a two minute knead time. So we're gonna spin that dial up and let it knead that beautifully together. So that is how simple it is to make the dough to make pasta. So you might turn this into fettuccine, you might turn it into spaghetti, you might make it into lasagna sheets. Uh, today, we're gonna let it rest and obviously make the ravioli. Hello, Michelle, lovely to have you on. Hey, Carissa, welcome. Now, what I'm gonna work on next is our thermo mat. Now, we're really fortunate in Australia. I don't know that other countries have this, but we do, is our mats. And you can get this for having a demo. Jump online with me, with two of your friends. We'll cook together for about half an hour, and you can get one of these discounted, or free if a friend is ready to buy. It's that simple. And um, these are amazing, okay? Absolutely amazing. Prove your dough in it. It's also oven proof. Just a note on the other note, if you put it through the oven, it tends to lose its color a little bit. It goes a bit yellow. But it is oven proof um, and yeah just absolutely amazing I even put mine through the dishwasher so I think the labeling says don't put it through the dishwasher but I think that's because they're worried it might get damaged on something else in your dishwasher like your knives or something 
uh, but however I wash mine that way as well. This makes your kitchen so clean. When you're doing breads and pastries, you'll see me the next three days, use this a lot. Okay, now my bread is coming together beautifully, hopefully. I'll just have a look up there, I'll just see if I can lift you up and show you what's going on in there. See, it's looking a bit like breadcrumbs at the moment, but the longer it needs, the more it comes together, I believe. Let's see. I have made pasta before. Has anyone made pasta before? I'd love to know in the chat if you've actually done just pasta on its own. I'd love to know if that's something you have done. Now, something to be mindful of is your eggs. If they're small eggs, you're going to need to add a bit more oil because you need a little bit more to, to get your dough to come together. So just something to be mindful of. You may be looking at adding more oil to get the dough to come all right, here we go. So excited. Okay, here we go. Next, transfer the pasta. Let me read it over here. It says, uh, now we need to leave. So it says, transfer the dough to a work surface, compact into a ball and wrap into a sheet of cling film, or we're going to use our mat. Leave to rest for 15 minutes. All right, let's just move this back out the way a little bit. Oh, veggie stock was nearly falling. All right. Let's put this now onto our thermo mat. So you can see there, it's a bit crumbly. However, if you pick up a chunk and you push it together, you want it to come together. Can you see how that was making a dough ball, right? That's what we want. I don't know if I can do this without making a mess. Ooh, what could possibly go wrong on live, hey? Alrighty, just keep it away from the edge. Turn the little, dot, the little cog on the bottom of your bowl for everything to fall out. Let's give you guys a squeeze this way. There we go. Trying not to make too much of a mess today. Some of it is stuck to the side. I will need to get the spatula in there in a moment. And now it says push together. So just lift this side up first. I'm going to push it into a dough ball. Now it needs to rest. Gluten needs to rest. Otherwise it's too stressed. It doesn't, it won't work. It just keeps constricting back up. If you try to make spaghetti with it, they just keep shrinking on you. So you do need to make sure your dough has time to rest. Oh. Okay, I'm just going to grab my spatula and grab the remaining amount out of the bowl. We don't want to let that go to waste. You can even see the bits that I was pushing down on on the tray there a second ago. It's, you know, they come together really easily. So don't expect it to come out in one big bowl. It is supposed to come out in shards like it has. Just get these bits off the side. Okay. And then we're going to move straight on. So once I get this in a ball, we're going to move straight on to, come on out. All right, little tip to get the leftovers off. I can't get it off the off the blades. Just put it, the bowl back in, put it up to speed 10 for a couple of seconds, and it'll just spin it all off the blades. It'll just go out to the sides. Did you hear, hear that? How it just went out to the sides? That's what we want. It'll allow it all to come loose off the sides. I'll often do that on things like muffins and cakes because it gives you a whole extra bit more of your batter out. Oh, look at that. It's just beautifully loosened off those blades. All right, here we go. So out that goes. Now, it doesn't say clean and dry the mixing bowl. Hooray for that. But what we're going to do now is we're going to mill some cheese down. So this is a predominantly cheese and meat filling. Okay, there we go. I'm going to just leave it in a rectangle because I find that I get a more consistent result. If you've got a big ball, um, it takes longer for things like chilling and stuff. However, we're not chilling it today. It's just sitting at room temperature. But I find it's, it's easier to then roll later because you've already got a rectangle to start with. So 15 minutes. Look at that. So clean, easy. All right, let's get back over here. Let's get back to our recipe. So my recipe on my TM6 bookmarks up the top because I jumped down and spun those blades. So there we go. Transfer, done that. Put into a ball, done that. Leave to sit for 15 minutes. Okay, here we go. So this, this word might be familiar, parmesan cheese, right? So we need 150 grams. It's a fair amount of parmesan. This is making, I reckon, a fairly big batch. It's actually making, oh, eight servings, eight? Yeah, eight servings. Sorry, looking at my laptop over there. So you definitely don't need to make a full batch if you're just serving you and a loved one. You could definitely do a smaller portion. My kids will, I presume, devour this. Between cheese and uh, meat, kind of can't go wrong. So there's that packet. I've got a second packet here. Now there's a secondary cheese in this as well. 
So there's lots of cheese. But you know what? It doesn't have to be this filling because it might be um, spinach and feta. My ideal would have been spinach and feta, but I didn't have feta in my fridge. So I couldn't make that. I had actually got no dairy except for cheese and butter and, and um, parmesan in there at the moment. So I was a bit restricted. But that might be what you do um, to, for your filling. It could be a tomato-based filling. It would be beautiful in there. Uh, go with what you've got. I don't think there's any right or wrong answer to what goes inside your beautiful little whites here. Okay, next. All right, this means put the lid on. And then 10 seconds, speed 10. Let's break the cheese down. Just because I'm impatient, I'm going to stop it early. And... Hello, Claire. Lovely to have you on. It's been a while, I feel like, since we've seen each other. It probably hasn't been that long, really. Time just flies, right? Okay, so now it's telling us to scrape, put down, scrape the sides down, and it wants you to put aside... 50 grams. Does it say leave 50 grams or transfer transfer 50 grams to a small bowl? Well, it's a bit technical. So let's take this out. Let's put a small bowl in. Let's bring up our scales. And we're going to transfer 50 aside. I presume this is kind of to dress the, the finished product later. We're going to sprinkle it on the top, I'm guessing. Let's see what I'm up to. Whoa, now I'm making a mess of cheese. Okay. Let's see what we're up to. That'll do. 46. Perfect. Okay, let's continue on. I love that you can interrupt your recipes. Did you know you could do that? You can interrupt the recipes and bring up the scales and things like that. Bring up your recipe details. Okay, we transferred 50 out. Next. Okay, now we're adding a different type of cheese. Now, I only had two options in my fridge. I either had uh, mozzarella or I had tasty. I thought I might actually use my mozzarella because this doesn't seem to have an egg to bind it. A lot of recipes will use an egg. If you do feta and spinach, you'll see there's an egg in it to bind it. This one doesn't have that. So I presume that the melting cheese is actually your binder. I'm making a big assumption. As I said, I haven't made these before. <laughs> you guys are my guinea pigs. And I hope you'll like, re realize how easy things are on cookie dough and you can just wing it and it will work out. Well, that's what I'm hoping from today. All right, 200 grams. So in this goes a little bit more. And this is rated quite well, this recipe, which is why I'm quite confident on it because it's rated at 4.6 stars. So I kind of thought, oh, I think that's going to be amazing. Okay, on with that measuring cup again. How good is the picture to show us what to do? I love that. Okay, 10 seconds, speed seven, off it goes. Now don't worry about the jump start, you can hear it do. What that is, is our motors are electromagnetic in a thermomix. So they're actually not driven by gears or bearings, it's actually driven by repelling magnets. So the reason that you hear that is it went to go to speed and it went, oh, I can't go, and it, it's like it hit the, I guess like driving car, put the foot to the floor and revved it up so it could go. If you hear it going, eh, 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 backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, yep, yeah, stop, abort the mission, push your selector to stop, and then you'll just move around your food inside. But what had happened there is perfectly fine. That's the machine doing its job. Okay, now it's saying to scrape down the sides of the spatula. And now it's asking for some sort of spreadable meat product. Now, I have no idea what that is. But what I did have is I have some cabana in our fridge. My kids quite like cabana when we have salads sometimes for lunches. So I'm going to go with cabana. I do wonder if I should be peeling off the skin off the outside. But you guys know that I'm a no-fuss person where possible. So if I have to blitz it instead, that's okay. We'll just do a bit of a blitz instead. So 200 grams of cabana or whatever you've got. But yes, I Googled it because this was the only thing that didn't translate well and it's a spreadable meat product. Oh, look at that. You don't get spot on like that very often here. Okay, I'm with the lid again. Let's see. 10 seconds speed five. Let's see if it chops that down. We'll see how we go. <laughs> sound like it chops down beautifully so next transfer let me see over on my other instructions let me just check what it says transfer to a bowl and set aside 
So our filling is now done and we can move on to making a sauce. So let me show you the filling. Look at that. Looks like cheese and salami. My kids are going to think that's phenomenal. All right, Femo server will do the job for that. By the way, Femo service for hosting a demo as well. So online, half an hour with two friends, get yourself a whole lot of stuff to go with your Femo mix. Love my Femo servers. Love my Femo mat too, I've got to say. Okay, let's see what's next. All right, I need to bring up the translation over here. So now we're up to place tomatoes in the mixing bowl. So we've got 300 grams of tomatoes. I'm This is actually now our sauce. So in a second, it's gonna cook for 15 minutes and we are gonna make ravioli. So I've got cherry tomatoes. Again, digging with what I had in the pantry. I don't have 300 grams. I've got, I think 250, unless somebody's eaten one out of there. It normally says cut in half, but anyway, I think somebody's eaten two, one or two, so that's way. Um, on with that lid again. And normally it says cut in half, but I figure since they're cherry tomatoes, they'll be fine. Let's blitz this down. Hello, Karen and Rob. Lovely to have you guys on. That tomato soup, Karen, is amazing. I've got some leftovers in my fridge that I was eyeing off to go with the buckwheat bread for lunch, actually. Uh, and Rob, answering your question, what country is this from? This is from the Italian cookie do. So when you're on the front screen of your cookie do, set your preferences, usually, to English ones, okay? And then you'll get all the English. So if you've got that set, you'll need to undo it so that you can actually find these. And if you type in ravioli, you'll find a whole selection of ones that aren't necessarily in English. But some of them also, I had to go through and look carefully because some of them didn't teach you how to make ravioli. They got you to buy ravioli and then they made the sauce. So just a little tip there as well. But this is Italian. Straight down the sides of the spatula. Then we add to it. Gonna need to come over and check what that is over here. What does it say to add? It says, oh, they ask, we, um, I can't say it. Zucchinis. <laughs> Sorry guys, 300 grams of zucchini and it does say peeled. I'm not gonna peel it. Uh, shortcut here where I can. So I'm just gonna put it in as it is. What's the word guys in the UK for a zucchini that starts with an A? Cause that's the one I'm having trouble pronouncing. Aubergine, that one. That's what they've got. So it's 300 grams of that which I'm a bit short again, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, now it's asking for one clove of garlic. Is that right? Yes, garlic. So I'm just using my garlic paste again, shortcutting this week, well and truly. One day I'm gonna have time to make my own garlic. And then 60 grams of oil. You can see the word oil in there, extra virgin olive oil. And then it's a lot of oil. I'm going to pull back on 50 because that just seems like a fair amount. And what is that? Half, uh, half a teaspoon of salt. Now, I'm not putting salt in. So that's actually salt. Diceol, however you pronounce that, is salt. What's, what do I use instead of salt in this house? Veggie stock. Okay, so it says half a... Just going to check over on the thing. Excuse me, leaning over. Just don't want to put the... It says half a teaspoon of salt. So I can put two teaspoons of, oh, say there container, two teaspoons, not tablespoons, but teaspoons of veggie stock. So four times the amount of veggie stock it would ordinarily call for. I've only got a big spoon here in my possession at the moment in here, so I'm just gonna put half a big spoon in. All right, there we go. So, oh, making a mess today. Next, put on the lid again, and now this is gonna cook. 15 minutes, 100 degrees, speed one, off it goes. Now, let's get back to, uh, while that's happening, to our pasta. So it has rested for probably not completely 15 minutes, probably 10 minutes, but it'll do the job. So, just spin you guys around so you can see this. Let's see if I can get some more space. All right. So what we're going to do is there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a pasta maker, which I do have, I'm going to show you how to do it with a pasta maker, but I'm also going to show you how to do it without a pasta maker. So we've got this beautiful wad of dough. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it on this bench here. I actually might need to go down onto my other bench to do this. But first thing we need to do is laminate it. 
So what that means is we're going to do some folding over to make this nice and smooth. Now, I can see there's a few that, I just put some on the floor, but I can see there's a few bits on top that need to get folded in. So we're just going to roll it out. Be patient, guys, for a second while I show you how to do this. Okay. So, and you would laminate it even if you're putting it through a roller, like a, pa a pasta roller. I'm going to show you that part later too. I've got my pasta roller here. I will show you that way, but I'm also going to show you how to do it if you don't have a pasta roller. It is a bit more labor intensive without one, but some of you guys might not have one, so I'll show you. So, I'm going to fold this over on itself, and I'm going to fold it one more time back on itself. A bit like folding a business letter, okay, in thirds. You'll see tomorrow when I do the croissant folding, you'll see a similar approach to that as well. So now I'm gonna rotate it around. Just try not to lose too much out of the ends. And let's roll it again. So each time it's gonna get smoother and silkier. Each time we roll it. I haven't needed to add any flour to it. And it's good if you don't. It's, it's much easier to work with if you don't, otherwise you end up with lots of flour. Although, when you get to smaller skinny bits, you may need to add flour to it there. Hello, Christine, lovely to have you on. Oh no, are you telling me that, all, oh no, I've got it the wrong way around. Oh well. <laughs> Thank you, Christine, for informing me. So Christine is telling us that an aubergine is an eggplant, and I should have put eggplant into this anyway, and a courgette is a zucchini. Never mind. We'll just make it up around here and hope for the kids eat it. That's all that matters. But thank you, Christine, for filling in the gaps in the translation. Okay, I'm going to do another fold. Whoops. Over we go. So we're doing thirds, just like a business letter. And over again, and you'll see each time it's getting smoother. All right, spin it again. Usually I would do it three times, but I'm just gonna see how I go. This is, um, my patience may wane. And it's actually looking really quite good now. If you guys can see that, it's looking quite smooth. Um, it's looking like the chunks are worn out of it. The gluten's starting to stick together. It's totally different texture to when we started before. Okay, so now I want to spread this out. I could do it one more time. I'm not going to, just for sake of time. And we're going to do two things. Number one, I'm going to cut it in half because I'm going to roll half through my pasta roller. And remember, if you made a quarter or a half batch, you would have less again to deal with, okay? Always try and work in squares or rectangles. Just keeps your sizing easier to deal with. So that's a half. And remember not to cut on your thermomat with a knife. So I'm going to work in quarter for the moment. Just put those aside. So, got a cool little square to start with. And you guys can probably see, where's that? See the texture? See how smooth it is? That's what you're looking for. All right. It has been a long time since I've rolled out pasta by hand. So bear with me. <laughs> while I roll it out by hand. So we are looking for a nice thin layer and we're gonna use actually today, I've got a couple of different trays to choose from. So I've got a mini muffin tray, which I'm not gonna use the depth of, okay? And then I've also got my little half ones from the mix shop because I think they are actually designed for making little cheesecakes, but I think their depth is a little bit more, is better. So I'm gonna use that as well. So I'm gonna try a couple of different methods. I have seen it done in ice cube trays as well, where you can use them to uh, make your ravioli shapes. So let's see how we go. All right. So, spin it around. But we've got a lot of rolling to do here. So if you are doing it by hand, it's got a little bit of manual rolling. If you're going through a pasta roller, you'll see later, it's gonna be 10 times as fast. That's okay. Now to cook our ravioli later, it says to do it in a pan of salted water. I will be using my blade cover. I'm not sure if we'll be on still at that stage, but I'm gonna use my blade cover to cook it in there so I don't have to tend to the stove 
one of my pet hates before owning a Thermomix was that I would always boil over my pasta. So I would, I just, too impatient, too hot, too quick, and I would always boil it over. So today I will be, and from here on in, I, I always do my pasta now in the Thermomix. So, one other note though, if you're putting this into, say, your favourite pasta recipe on Cookie Do, and it would normally use um, dry pasta, you want to only cook this for three minutes. Three minute cook time for your beautiful homemade pasta, not uh, 12 minutes. There'll be nothing left of it if you cook it for 12 minutes. It does not require that long of a cook time. All right, we're nearly ready with this sheet. I'm going to show you what to do with it. It's looking beautiful though. It feels amazing. So there's a couple of different ways you can do this, but the way I'm going to do it today is I'm going to... You could cut out your circles and then connect them together in these. I'm going to put it on the top and do it that way and then cut them out on the top and hope it, hope it works. Now the way I know that this is thin enough is that because I can see the design of the mat through it. Have a look at that. Can you guys see how you're starting to see the design through of the mat? That's telling us that we are thin enough to use. Okay, so that is ready. So how cool is working on a thermo mat? Look at that. I can lift it up and play with it. Now if you're through a roller, you could probably get it a bit thinner, but we'll do that next. I'll show you the short version later. Okay, so on top of this, oh, make it a little bit longer. Hang on, not quite long enough. Just go a little bit longer. Now I am going to need to roll a second one out for the top. Okay, there we go. So I'm not going to use the full depth of these holes because otherwise it is going to be too deep. Oh, I need a little bit longer on that. Sorry guys, two seconds longer. By the way, if you hadn't relaxed your your um, roll your dough, you wouldn't be able to roll it out like we are here now because it would just keep shrinking back. So just going to come over here. The comments are going off the screen. Hello, Annette. Lovely to have you on. Okay. Let's try again. Have I made it long enough this time? Yes, I have. Okay, so now it's the same size as my thing that I want to use. I need to now put my finger into each little hole so that it gives an indent for our filling to sit in. Can you guys see me doing that? I don't need to go all the way to the bottom because obviously if you go really far down, you're going to have to fill it immensely, right? Okay. So... One part done. How cool does that look? Let's grab our other little bit here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to now swap over just for ease of time. You've seen me roll out. You know how to roll out. But for ease of time, let me just grab my awesome little roller. The Thermomix Mix Shop used to have these in them. I don't know that they do anymore. Um, I think they might have stopped making them or selling them or bringing them in. But they are really handy to have because things like making your own pasta, it makes it quick and simple. Sorry guys, I'm just connecting it to the bench. And I'm really hoping I've got enough space here to work with. <laughs> let's see, let's get a bit more space. So, get rid of that water. Alrighty, let's give this a crack. So, just get it a little bit thinner and you'll notice how much faster this is. So I need to be able to fit it through I've already laminated it, so I don't necessarily have to do that again. All right, now start at the widest setting. So you've got these little setting knobs on the end. All right, start at your very biggest setting. Where's the handle? Here it is. Okay. By the way, if the mix shop doesn't have these, you can usually pick them up. Is that moving? Yep. At odd, like kitchen shops. So. Kitchen shops also sell them. All right, four minutes left on that sauce. Time is flying. All right, let's wind this in. Have I got the wrong end in? I do have the wrong end in. Let's try the correct end of the handle. All right, here we go. So, through it goes. Let's 
see if I can get a different angle for you guys. Let's see if you guys can see that. So catch it as it comes out the bottom. There we go. You can see all of a sudden how much thinner that's gotten. Okay. Now, I feel like it needs to probably be laminated one more time. Can you guys see the white in it, the white flecks? So all we do to laminate it is fold it over, crease it at the bottom so it'll fit in, and slide it through again. There we go. So now let it come out, and you'll see the textures change slightly. And now I can start shrinking it. So all I do is I wind it down one hole. Don't be too impatient with this. And put it through again. Now as it gets thinner, it's going to get a little bit harder to handle. So you're going to need to probably cut it in slightly smaller bits. In the chat box, who has a, a pasta roller at home? Who has one that they use? I'd love to know. Say hi. Let us know if you've used it yet or if it's still sitting in the cupboard unused. So I'm just dropping it a little bit smaller each time. In it goes. Grab the bit from underneath. There it is. Now, if you're trying to make pasta for later, you'll want to flour it up and then put it in a, an airtight container. What that does is it means it won't stick together and it'll be there for later. All right. If you put it in a container, uh oh, something doesn't feel right. Ah, I've just got it stuck. Let's try again. Ugh. That's what happens. Don't roll backwards, guys. It gets it jammed everywhere. All right, two shakes. We may end up finishing this the manual way yet. Let's try and clean that out. Put it down. Ah, okay, it's going round inside now because, let's see if I can get it out. Here we go, there we go. Let's try again. That's what happens when you don't grab it from underneath. You'll do full circles with it and you'll need to then Clean it out. Here we go. Alright, we might abort the mission on that one and I might just show you because it is actually thin enough now. If you look at how wafer thin they are, if anything, they're nearly too thin. They're probably fettuccine thin, which isn't too bad, but that was probably as thin as I wanted to go. Should have stopped on the step before. Okay. Alright, let's come back to this messy bit in a second. Let's come back over here and let's use this sheet to show you now what to do with your filling. So this sheet here, minus the tacky end that I've just killed. Cut that off. All right, so what I will do is I'm just gonna see if I can give it a little bit more width to put on top. Now I have read different reports on how we do this next step. Some people say to put egg wash on top to join it, which is what I'm tempted to do. So I am going to crack an egg in a second into a dish and beat it up. I need to open the door. It's really warm in here. There we go. Okay. Let's grab an egg because this is how we're going to connect the two bits of our pastry. Otherwise, they're not going to stick together very well. You could use water, but it still may not actually bind the way you want it to bind. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to put a little bit of the egg over our things here not in the holes we're going around the hole so that it sticks together got a little brush up here that'll help me okay around the holes doesn't matter if you get a little bit in there it won't matter but this is our glue think of it as your glue to stick your layers together as i said this recipe doesn't call for you to do this but i think it's safer if you do Okay, that's our sauce done. Can you believe it? Okay, so that's got the little bits in it. I must have forgotten to push that one down. I'll do that when I put the little foodie bit in in a second. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a teaspoon and we're going to start loading these up. We'll just give this one a little push down. There we go. I've got a paprika spoon happening, but that's okay. So now all we're doing is don't overfill them, okay? All the things I read... You don't want to overfill them. That's probably borderline too much. And we're just doing this. So in that filling goes. And what I am going to do 
is I'm going to see if I can get some water onto boil so I can show you how to put the blade cover in and get that next step going because I have a second bowl here as well. How are we going in the chat? I don't need to go to the gym after hand rolling. Certainly not, Christine. <laughs> it's quite the workout. All right. Just get these filled up for you guys. So I reckon it could even just be as simple as bacon and cheese in the filling. That one's a bit full. Let's come over this way. I don't think it has to be as elaborate as, um, you know, the salami. I reckon you certainly could do whatever your favorite is. I really had a thing for feta and spinach, but anyway, didn't have any feta, so you can't do it if you haven't got it right. So, how are you boys? Are you guys going to do these for me when I'm finished? Yep. Yeah? Got a little crowd at the door. By the way, those of you watching on, please make sure your friends and family know that two things, price rise is coming. The vacuum cleaner offer. Well, my kids have used the vacuum cleaner again. It's not behind me, but that's ending tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Um, and that, if they don't want that, there's also a free bread tin and thermomat at the moment for when you're buying a thermomix. So it's a fantastic time to get a thermomix in the kitchen, especially before the price rise. Okay. So, there we go. Filled up those. Thanks, buddy. A little help has hurt me. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, let me just swap these bowls out. Put some water in here. Can you fill that up to one and a half liters for me, little helpers? All right, this one here, just make sure you haven't got too much filling around the edges. I do have a bit of a mess because I'm trying to hurry because I'm on Facebook Live with you guys. So, and hi to those of you who are on YouTube as well. Um, after this goes live on Facebook, it goes on YouTube. So there's some of you guys who are watching from there as well. All right, now, Landon, can you come here for me? I need a second set of hands because I need them to lift this up for me. You're done with that? All further, keep going, keep going up to the second last dot. Can you come here? Can you lift this mat up for me? That bottom one there. Two hands. Oh, okay, yep, lift that off, that's fine. Go up, 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 you're up. All right, so now the part where we get to put it all together. Thanks, buddy. We're just going to sit this over the top. Oh, it's a little bit short on one end. How annoying. Let me just see if I can get a little bit more width on it. Thanks, buddy. It's just a little short on this end. I'm just going to see if I can quickly roll a bit more width out of it down here. It certainly doesn't roll as well on the bench as it does on a thermo mat. Let's see if that works better. Just about. All right. So now what we want to do is we need to be able to give it a really good press down around our little circles. Now, mine is not going to be pretty. Because you're doing it by hand, you don't have a little cutter or anything like that. I've never got the cutter from the mix shop to cut them out. So it is going to be very much hand done. But give it a little push around. You want to make sure you've got good contact between, between them. And then after that, we're going to cut them out. Or we're going to attempt to cut them out. Let's see how we go. So press it down. Try and get the air out of the little holes before you do press it. Because otherwise they may explode in your cooking water. Let's see if I can get that over there. A little bit short changed on this side. Okay. So we're going to then get a cutter to cut these out. Now this is where it could be challenging. Um, but we're going to tip it out first to do so. Now I was actually going to use my TM31 measuring cup. Which is why it was here. So let's flip this out. Because I can give it more pushing when I'm upside down with it. I think you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Let's lift this out. Let's see what it looks like. I do love working with the silicon. It gives you more ability to, I guess, control it. And you don't have to spray it. Okay. All right, there we go. So there's our upside down ones. Again, just check that we're all pushed out now nicely. Because we were working with silicon before, there may well be gaps in it. So just give it that little push down. And then you need to find something that's the right size for what you've got. So if you're using, say, an um, ice cube tray, you need something. Or you could do it with a knife, I guess. You could freeform it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that 31 measuring cup. Place that around. You guys see that? Yep. And, except it's a bit hot, hang on, towel. It's been cooking with the tomato -y, supposed to be eggplant, zucchini today. Um, mix in it. 
So let me just give that a push down, make sure there's enough space for the one next to it. And there you go, one little ravioli pouch, ready to go. Now, if you want to make it a little bit more fancy, of course you can grab, can you pass me that towel, lovey? You can grab your fork and you could fork it around the edges. So you could actually grab your fork and just go press. I probably need to do it on a flat surface. Hang on a second. Just don't have the space. There it is. So fork it around the edges like that. Make it a little bit fancy. And also, I guess the other thing that will do is, is, is ensure that you've got a really nice seal. But there you go. Look at that. Ravioli. How easy. Oh my gosh. All right, so I'm doing another one for you guys. There we go. Look at that. So then all you need to do is cook it in some water. They don't take long. Let me just go through next. Let's just have a look what it says. Um, I probably should have looked on my, my laptop. Three to four minutes. So once that water is boiling, you're going to put them in for three to four minutes, remove them with a slotted spoon, and then serve them with the sauce. Look at that. I'm so proud of myself. I've never made ravioli. I've done it. So have a look at this sauce. Oh, the sauce didn't chop the zucchini down. I think I need to go back and chop the zucchini into the sauce. Let's go back. Now let's, let's just finish that off camera. What I've got here is I've cooked the tomato sauce and I've got the zucchini, but the zucchini didn't chop down. So I'm going to chop the zucchini into it for five seconds, speed five. Sauce will be done then. But I might just make another one of these because these are so cute. So as you're making your own ravioli, I'd love to see pictures. So please do send through pictures. If you have challenges with it, I'm here to help. So please do reach out and let, you know, ask for questions and things like that. But these are super easy to make. If you've got a pasta maker, even quicker and easier, but don't let that stop you giving it a go if you don't have a pasta maker because they are just awesome. Look at that. And made in, what's that, a little cheesecake bomb tray or something. But certainly, there is no reason why you can't make it in the same process in a big tray as well. And it could even be, I reckon, even an, a stainless steel or whatever the rose gold trays are. I reckon there's no reason you can't do that as well. Just remember not to push your dough all the way to the bottom because it doesn't need to go all the way to the bottom. You just need a little pocket to be able to fill with amazing food. So there you go. I'm going to finish these so that we can eat them for, I was going to do soup for lunch with the bread, but we might eat them for lunch. I'm going to give that a blitz up, five seconds speed five to finish that sauce off with that zucchini. Uh, finish these off. And yeah, let me know what you think. I'd love you to give them a go and then let me know what you think. Whether you use this filling or not, that's okay. But have a go at making your own pasta in the Thermomix. It is so easy and achievable. And then turn it into amazing ravioli using something like your ice cube tray. All right, guys, take care. I'm going to see you back here tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, we are making some gluten-free bread again. Um, and tomorrow afternoon, it is all about croissants rolling. So I'm excited to show you guys that technique for how to roll your croissants uh, so that you guys can all make your own as well. Uh, Rob, great question before I go. Can the, the TM6 measuring cup make the same thing? They'll make a slightly different shape. It's more like a teardrop shape. Um, but a cookie cutter or even a glass would work just as well. So I reckon like a little upright glass would be the, would be the right size. But it's really going to depend on what you've got as your tray. I, I just dug in my tray of, of everything, my, my, sorry, my drawer of trays, and that's what I came out with. And then this was the right size for it. You may find that you, know, you might need something bigger or smaller, depending on what you've got as well. All right, take care, guys. Um, share the news about Thermomix Price Rise coming. Share your, your food with your friends and family so that they can get curious about a Thermomix. And then let's do a demo and change their kitchen, getting one on their bench. But take care, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.